Thankfully, at just the same moment, there were other thinkers at work. Saturday, the 7th of July, 1900, was a hot, sticky day in the narrow back streets of York. At first light, a shadowy figure stood holding a notebook, watching the door of a small, dirty pub. By 6 a.m., people were already rattling the door of the public house. Everybody who went in, everyone who came out, was duly noted down in the little book. In all, 550 people went in, 113 of them children. Children simply abound here, the investigator wrote. I count no less than 13 sitting on the public house steps and the pavement. The observer was one of a team of private inspectors in an investigation into the living conditions of the poor. The project was the brainchild of a wealthy Quaker called Seabome Roundtree, a member of the sweets and chocolate family. As the inspectors delved deeper and deeper into the back streets of York, their anger and nausea began to smoke from the statistics and the dry notes. Dirty flock bedding in living room placed on box and two chairs. Smell of room from dirt and bad air, unbearable. Nearby, 16 families were sharing one water tap. The grating under the water tap is used for the disposal of human excreta and was partially blocked with it when inspected. The rich had always blamed the poor for bringing poverty upon themselves by being idle or feckless. But Roundtree's study demonstrated in cold statistical fact that people slipped into poverty for many different reasons. The poor were victims. They weren't genetic failures. They were women without an income who'd been widowed or deserted. They were people broken by ill health or old age, unable to work, or they were in work but simply weren't being paid enough to keep themselves and their families decently. Roundtree's book, published in 1901 and called simply Poverty, is among the most important things written by a British person in the 20th century. It set thinking Britain alight. It convinced a generation of liberal politicians they needed to deliver welfare and social reform, which is perhaps why we've never had a successful revolutionary movement in this country. So Seabone Roundtree didn't only trump Galton, he trumped the Communist Manifesto as well.